no mritam. There is no amritam here. Mritam manaha punaha na bhavati. Mritam manaha punar no bhavati. So amrita is not, it, not the word, mritam. So what is a dead mind? It's a language. It's not really dead mind. It's a dead ego. If the ego is dead, and one last time, ego is the summation of countless questionable judgments. Both ideas of high and ideas of low constitute ego. Next time, on some ground, you think you are superior to others, that is a form of ego. Another time, on some ground, whatever it is, if you feel inferior, if you feel low, if you feel not up to the mark, that's also a form of ego in this philosophy. None high, none low, all are the same Brahman, all are children of the same God. Rest of it is the mischief of the mind, is wisdom. Therefore, Sri Ramana advises us, do use prana bandhana, verse 14, do use restraint of the breath by pranayama or prana vikshana and by implication other things like mantra etc. And then when the mind subsides, when you have a high degree of economy of thought, economy of mental noise, you can't over idealize saying when I have no thought I will think of Brahman. That's too hard. When you have relatively much less thoughts than before, then the soil is fertile for Brahma Chintana, which is called here Eka Chintana. At this juncture I should tell you, Patanjali's Ashtanga Yoga talks about eight limbs, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, what is that? Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi. Maharshi says, all of them are wonderful, they deserve to be practiced, but essentially it is about calming the mind and then illumining the mind. It's about quietening thoughts and plucking away the egoistic thoughts. And therefore, out of the eight limbs, he highlights pranayama, which is the fourth limb of the eight. Yama, niyama, asana, pranayama. He says, here, yeah, this is the crux of the matter. You know, like good finance experts, give them pages and pages of balance sheet and all those things. They just look at it and then they say, look, this is where your company is running into a problem. Whereas somebody like me, you give just one page of some income and expenditure, I almost faint. So I am not into finance. This, uh, what you call balance sheets and well, there's something called trial balance. That was like a court trial for me. <laughs> when somebody came and gave me some paper in Varanasi. Take a look, sir, this is the trial balance. I said, this is a trial for me. You take it away. <laughs> you decide. All of us have our skills. Give me some Sanskrit and some, you know, what does it mean? Grab it and say, come here. <laughs> Grammar, Vyakarana, language, philosophy are my forte. So, just as an expert in any subject quickly sees what is essential, Maharshi Ramana in the Ashtanga Yoga says, look, pranayama is a key thing where you can calm the mind and dhyana is where you can sublimate the mind. You can transform the mind. Therefore, we say these six verses are essentially a summary of the third path, Raja Yoga, or just Yoga. Karma Bhakti third is Yoga. Tomorrow we will be seeing the path that Maharshi especially championed, generally called Jnana Yoga, but in his case it has been further christened as Vichara Marga. Inquiry, for it is marked by questioning, after all, who am I? And next time the mind says, I am failure, question it. Am I? Who am I? Some other time, a compliment is thrown at oneself, question it. Am I? I 
either way. When you feel inferior, question that. When you feel superior, question that. To be free of any judgment except for functionality. Somebody took my teachings too seriously once. I, you know, we Vedantins, we philosophers. You are not this body. You are not man. You are not woman. You are pure consciousness. He was very happy to hear that. And after the lecture, he went to airport to catch a flight. After check-in or security check, he wanted to go to bathroom and he stood there. I am not man, I am not woman. Where do I go now? <laughs> Washrooms, restrooms. <laughs> yeah? To dramatize it, he called me from there. Swamiji, in your lecture you said I am pure consciousness. I am neither man nor woman. Now to which restrooms do I go? <laughs> this is a big confusion of functional and psychological domains. Functionally, men are men, old are old people, young are young people, rich are rich people, poor are poor people. Poor people cannot buy something which a rich man can afford. These are all functional details. But the psychological aspect is, if the so-called poor man has a spiritually illumined mind, he will have a pinch of pain at not being able to buy something which maybe he or his family would need. A little pain there would be, but that's about it. He reconciles with the situation and is at peace. That is the spiritual maturity. A little discomfort. You know. And the rich man who can, you know, just by swapping a card he buys and takes it home, will have a pinch of happiness. Oh, I liked it and I just brought it home. That's about it. He will not gain anything much more. And if he is spiritually illumined, because he could easily buy what he wanted, he would not be filled with pride or arrogance or some kind of, you know, judgmentalism towards others. He, he, he lives on his level of uh, wealth, that's different. But there is no foul smell of superiority and all kinds of other bias. So spirituality removes the psychological disturbance of high and low, while functionally different people are able to do different things. The finance expert is able to handle a whole lot of facts and figures and tax rules and all that. He is able to manage them. Somebody else who is good in music, moment he hears a minute of some song, he knows what raga it is, what notes. <coughs> I once asked a Swamiji, some, some song was going on. Swamiji, can you tell, tell us what, what raga? Raga, you know? That Swamiji said, I am a Swami, I am a Sadhu. I only know Viraga. <laughs> Viraga means Vairagya. I don't know all these Ragas. But there are some Swamis who know very much music also. So, Eka Chintanat, calm the mind which is necessary, then with a calm and collected mind, think of that one truth which is in all. Sri Maharshi brings the topic of Raja Yoga to a conclusion in the next two verses. Nashtamana Sot Krishna Yogi Naha Nashtamana Sot Krishna Yogi Naha Krityamastikim Swastitim Yataha Krityamastikim Swastitim Yataha Nashtamana Sot Krishna Yogi Naha Nashtamana Sot Krishna Yogi Naha Krithya mastikim swastitim yataha Krithya mastikim swastitim yataha Drishya varitam chitta matmanaha Drishya varitam chitta matmanaha Chitva darshanam tattva darshanam Chitva darshanam tattva darshanam Drishya varitam chitta matmanaha Drishya varitam chitta matmanaha Chitva darshanam tattva darshanam Chitva darshanam tattva darshanam
picking up from the 14th verse where the last quarter said nasham eti adaha adaha means this this mind nasham eti meets with death once more the mind here has to be taken as ego the ego meets with death the ego is annihilated the ego is thrown off lock stock and barrel by eka chintana not by numerous religious practices which succeed in calming your mind calming is not enough like a robber a dacoit a wicked a criminal suppose he is put on sedative he will be sleepy he will be calm but once he regains his alertness he regains his energies alas the criminal will get back to his criminal ways so this human mind by japa by pranayama or sometimes by satsangs in the presence of some pious people for a while we feel very calm and we may come under the illusion that i am changed i have after attending that satsang i tell you i am transformed till you go home or it will stay for only a few hours afterwards all evil tendencies rise again because nasham na eti coming so you have to see it's so in um, all subjects actually one kind of education you know sort of suppresses the symptoms another kind of education goes to the root cause of human um, you know suffering and removes it i guess in medicine also there are so many things that suppress the symptoms one feels so relieved then there are other medicines which take away the root causes which truly cure the person right so is the spirituality picking up from that expression nasham eti maharshi ramana says if the ego is destroyed nashta ahankara would be the straight simple language but aligned with some ancient scriptural heritage he takes the liberty to use the word nashta manasa which literally could be misleading to some people oh mind is destroyed if my mind is my mind is destroyed how will i function <laughs> so we say your mind is not function enlightenment doesn't mean mind is gone without a mind you cannot operate somebody put it very humorously you know a doctor uses a stethoscope an electronics engineer uses an oscilloscope and uh, a biologist uh, to study some my, my small things uses a microscope somebody else uses some other scope even the pandit ji uses horoscope <laughs> <laughs> so it was said that like that uh, all of them the doctors and electronics engineers and pandit ji and botanist and all of them use one instrument without fail that is called mind mind is the common instrument first you have the mind and your working mind then you use a stethoscope or a microscope or a telescope astronomer uses telescope mind is a must so what is this nashta manasa if the mind is destroyed how can we live so for the nth time we clarify in this context mind means the ego feeling superior feeling inferior judging somebody as uh, no good uh, or some other time judging ourselves as what a terrible failure i have been and so on this is the mischief of a certain certain subset of thoughts that subset is called ego nashta manasa utkrishta yogi if our ego dies we become yogis par excellence preeminent yogis a yogi truly speaking is not one who can stand upside down or not one who can walk on water not one who can fly in the air tich not han a buddhist monk uh, is very well known in the world he made a statement sometime back 
The miracle is not about walking on water or flying in the air. The miracle is about walking on this earth with peace in your heart. Walking on this earth with peace in our heart is the miracle that you and I should aspire for. Nashta manasa utkrishta yogina. Maharishi asks a question, Kritya mastikim. If this ego meets with its destruction, is there any duty that is left for him or her? Kritya means kartavyam. By asking so, the answer is implied, self-implied. There is no duty anymore. Why, why is there no duty for him? Swastitim yataha. Swastitim gatasya. He has gone to his own true nature. Hrtstale manaswastata, as the tenth verse had said. In his case, where the ego is dead, the mind has settled and come to abide by one's true nature. That is 